part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Look up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's... This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birdwine. You're listening to The Krypton Report. Welcome to the Krypton Report podcast. I am your host, Tyler, the Superman of Blue, the Man of Tomorrow. And with me is Mr. James Cole, the Superman of Red, the Man of Steel. What's up, buddy? Oh, I didn't I didn't realize I was like getting introduced for a fight or something. Yeah. Well, surprise, you're about to hear your doorbell ring, and there will be Brian ready to beat you up. <laughs> Ding dong. What? I mean, let's go. <laughs> uh, good times good times but no so this podcast is going to be interesting because we just got a lot going on and what we're doing is this is actually part one uh it's going to be two different segments added together so if there's some things like wait a minute um that doesn't make sense you'll you'll understand why but the first thing first we don't have a lot of news we know san diego's coming up um so that'll probably filter into our next podcast. Uh, <clears throat> but what we do have is as of this recording, we have the digital release of the flash. Now I have started the movie with my kids. We start watching, but I always like to with movies I've seen and stuff is I'll start watching deleted scenes and I'll watch some special features. And I just have some things I wanted to throw out there. Um, first, we'll just start with deleted scenes. Yeah, most of them suck. <laughs> um, the only yeah, one that I like, there are two that I like. Um, the first one is when Barry finds Kara's ship. I think that could have been left in. Um, but inside that scene is how he finds her suit, which I like if they would have cut out, cut the part where he's like, pulling out like is superman petite like it already is kind of like alluding to the fact that it's not superman like i think you could have cut around it a little bit but i like that it's young barry finding her ship and it's the same looking ship that we saw in man of steel (laughs) so i liked that one yeah um yeah it was it was decent i mean if if they hadn't if Supergirl wasn't all over the marketing in this thing, I mean, it would have served the movie a little bit, but seeing as the fact that, you know, I mean, the only people who thought they were looking for Superman was uh, Barry, Barry, and Batman. True. Like, Yeah, yeah, I mean... You know, it only serves for them. But you still wanted to kind of, like, feel like if you didn't know... Mm-hmm. It would be a shock. You know what I'm saying? For those few people who maybe don't know or something. I don't know. You, I never underestimate the stupidity of people. Um, so you never know what you're walking into. Um, but I like that one. The other one is just additional little pieces of the chase scene with Batfleck. Um, I could have easily just left that in there and enjoyed that. Yeah, it was, it was only a handful more seconds of the chase scene. Yeah, and I mean, there's easily stuff I could go through this movie and just, tw- like, up, oh, snip that, cut that, and yeah, we can put that bat flight scene back in. Because if you're going to complain about time or something, you know? <clears throat> uh, right. Uh, well, I mean, I don't I don't know how this movie was how this movie ended up being produced with, with the, the change of all the regimes and everything that, that has gone on. I mean, since this movie took forever to be produced in the first place, you'll get, um, you'll get a sense of it. It it just, it's, it makes it seem like it's probably, it was probably also mandated to that close to two hour mark, you know, could be like, and, and, they just that's how that's how things like that um just little things that would have been that would have extended something like that that they already shot would have been nice to see 
Um, but uh, also watching those deleted scenes, I could also see how the movie could be worse. I mean, yeah, most of those cringe things, jokes and most every one of those um, scenes of Barry and um, just Barry and Barry stuff like it just it did not beef like it was <laughs> it it did not beef at all. You you got that right. So. <clears throat> Um, you know, yeah, it's just, uh, I, I will be purchasing the, you know, I will be buying it. Um, I'm, I'm debating the digital <laughs> purchase at the moment though. Um, because I will be buying it physical, but, uh, it's just, yeah, it's crazy how this movie's been out one month and I mean, it's it's in its death throes. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, um, it's 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 weird. Um, so, but anyway, I so I've watched the movie. Um, and. I mean, the special features, sorry. Um, my dog's getting into something. Mira's getting on my nerves today. Um, and the other thing that I got thinking of is if you needed to save money, okay, on a budget, even though you have money to spend, I think with a movie like this, you should always be thinking of post. Like, how can I, you know, cut the budget so there's more money in post? Where I come under budget, you know, things are tight. I mean, one thing about this film that they talk about, and I give it a little slack, is how they wanted to shoot the desert scene and stuff like that to mimic Man of Steel. But because of COVID, they couldn't travel or move. So they ended up with a lot of stuff just being on sound stages. I get that. Okay. I, I understand. And I'm willing to roll with stuff because I get it. You know, that this movie was filmed in 2021. Um, so. I understand. Okay. The other thing, it had a long shoot because of COVID and stuff. The other thing is one, don't write a script that involves two berries for the majority of the film, because watching the technology that they used to make the two berries so beautifully seamless cannot be cheap. <laughs> and I, I was trying to, I was telling Jania, like, I want a whole documentary on how that works because it was fascinating and I understand it enough, but at the same time, not fully. And there's so much stuff in the special features where I'm like, that's a lot of post-production stuff to work on from some shots where he's just wearing a helmet with a mocap suit to being in full costume to being like in a stunt costume um, on two different berries, you know, and that technology can't be cheap. Plus you're paying another actor um, to be there to perform the stunts and to be, uh, the other berry. Okay. Yeah. So that, if you cut that technology down, you didn't have two berries for the entire movie. You could save money. Sure. Barry doesn't have a, anyone to pal around with, but you could work that right. The second part is don't go to like five different four, like three or four different house locations for Wayne Manor. Like watching how much production they have to move around for like certain just little shots. And like I know filmmaking art, technical stuff, but like they went to one place just to film a staircase scene. They went to another place. They went like for one day in the original house to film one scene um, to kind of mirror. And I'm just like the Wayne Manor stuff is so small in there. I'm like, that is just you could have saved a lot of money by not going there. But here, here's the big clincher. <laughs> find, find a way to not have to build a whole freaking suburb. <laughs> <laughs> like they filmed this in the UK. <clears throat> and I think I, I can't put my finger on it, but there is a different flavor of filming in the UK to, to filming in the United States. Just like, 
Je- Zack Snyder's Justice League was filmed in the UK, and some of the exterior shots, there's just a feeling of this isn't America. I can't put my finger on it, but there is because you, you they use a lot of patchwork digital stuff. Um, but like they built a whole street, <laughs> and I know a lot of movies do stuff like this. I get it, but I'm also looking back at how much money the Flash has lost, <laughs> and maybe if the budget was lower, you yeah, might have maybe. it might have helped. Right, yeah, at least not, at least not be such a loss. I mean, heck, at this point, if this was one of the movies they canceled, they would have made more money. Yeah, there's been debate online about now <laughs> about that, and uh, yeah, it's it's debatable. I mean, I, I don't know how those how that uh, tax break on that type of stuff works. Um, it's it's subjective, or it's subjective to each project. What what I what I hate is you watch the you see how much these people loved and worked and how much. Andy loved what he was doing and loved his cast and the movie and putting so much work into it. And then for it to suffer like it has is really heartbreaking. Um, so I really hope that it's not a reflection of Andy and that he does do the brave and the bold and he shows everyone that he is the good filmmaker. We know he is, you know, based on his previous work. Um, the other thing that I find fascinating Okay, is they allude to why Bruce Wayne stopped being Batman, and they say basically he ended up killing a he ended up killing a criminal in front of the criminal's son, like mirroring mirroring his what made him into Batman, and that's why he stopped being Batman. And I'm like, that's that. That's was that in the film or was that behind the scenes? No, that was that wasn't that's something they talk about. That was like a subplot that they cut out, oh, like dialogue okay. and stuff about Bruce because it was it was tied into how does he know so much about the multiverse and time travel, which I think is rightfully so they cut it out because that's something heavy you don't drop in something like this and never get to explore. Now I made a quick comment to you like wouldn't it have been neat. Is if this movie had an in like had it had its original ending with Keaton as Batman and Batgirl be kind of spun out of this and part of you know that came up in Batgirl or something you know where Keaton's back but he can't do it as alone he takes him Batgirl you know what I'm saying um, and then that story got played out there because that's a heavy thing to to drop on somebody. Um, and then not explore it. So I'm glad they left it out. But at the same time, like I would have preferred that over some of the Barry Barry stuff. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, if if I, I guess we're I guess we're past that point now. <clears throat> Excuse me. I guess we're past that point now. You know, we we um you know we like the movie. Um, we're, we uh, but for... we but we don't we don't ignore that it has flaws either yeah for all of our audience we're actually planning on trying to next week do a live comment or not a live but like a commentary on it um because of these quick digital releases and stuff it makes it easier for us to do these turnarounds and i and i kind of want to watch it with james and talk about it because it is still such a hot topic to discuss right now yeah um but it's uh um it, now that now that we're like farther away from the movie and everything, um, like it's not the movie, it's really not the movie that it should have been. Um, uh, you know, and that's that's one thing to say. I mean, like all the pieces were there. You know, they had they had um, all these characters, um, actors who were there. They even had them in the movie. I mean, they had Wonder Woman in the movie. They had. Aquaman in the movie, and they were wasted cameos. Yeah, Aquaman scene is so important to going forward, and what happened at the end of the Flash that it should have been moved up, um, and not been a post credit scene, and should have been a little bit more of a serious scene instead of Arthur being drunk. Like, which was actually already established that he doesn't really get drunk. Yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess if you, I guess if you want to say that he's trying to keep up with the Flash. That maybe he could get drunk. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Because Flash can't get drunk because of his metabolism. 
And if you try to keep up with the Flash, I mean, maybe almost anybody <laughs> could get drunk at that point, except for Superman. But, uh, <clears throat> um, yeah, it's just, you know, wasted cameos. There are such big characters in the story that was adapted, um, or rather inspired. Um, it's just, there's a lot of elements that could have been more true to the story if they wanted to, if they wanted it to be the, the structure of Flashpoint, um, that were already there. They didn't have, I mean, they didn't have to do like the whole, um, Amazon Themyscira war. Cause yeah, that would have been super expensive. Um, but I mean, but, uh, also being allies and, uh, or in contention, I do like the, I, I do like the man of steel thing because it, or the, um, uh, the, the black zero event, because it is within the universe, you know, the, mm-hmm. it fits. I mean, I, did discuss that. I, I do like that, but also, like, <clears throat> Keaton was brought in, and then everything surrounding Keaton was all fan service, and not, and it all, and everything was just props. It just sat there, um, you know. And even even some of his lines were just like, "Hey, you remember when he said that? Hey, you remember when he said that? You know what I'm saying?" Yeah, I mean, um, how much better of a they, film would it have been is if you would have dropped the other Barry and done, and just been like he pals around with Keaton's Bruce more. Like he goes up to see Batman, one of the first things he did, and he has his powers. You know what I'm saying? Instead of like, oh, he lost his powers. And you know what I'm saying? like, Well, you can see why in the timeline he doesn't have his powers because he didn't become the Flash because he didn't need to become the Flash. So when he kind of comes back out of the timeline, he doesn't have his but, powers. But, I mean, you would make it different because you would drop... If you didn't use Young Barry, you would drop Dark Flash. Yeah. I mean, you could do something different, but it just feels like... I don't know, doing... So, I mean, he's... there. It would it would take some restructuring. Honestly, I think... I I enjoyed seeing Keaton, and, and Muschietti did some really cool things with Batman. Um... But it was so, it was all just so fan service at this point. It just, I think that it would have been better if they would have used a Thomas Wayne uh, Batman. I, I um, mean, I would have been happy if you would have done something. If you wanted to bring back Keaton or something. It's so hard to say because of how this movie was originally supposed to go in everything. But I just, I, not two berries and had. Um, him spend more time with Batman. I think that could have been a big. Well, I think there's that. I think there's a big emotional payoff, you know, Um, we, we don't get much of that when it comes to this, this version of Batman. I mean, one, the only thing we know about him is that he basically uh, saved Gotham from crime. And now like without Batman, he's, depressed or or whatever but um i just yeah i just think that the it would have been more powerful for the batman character to have been like this batman who was willing to sacrifice everything to make sure that this that this timeline didn't happen that it was that his son would live if he if he sacrificed if he sacrificed himself to to get Barry back to his own timeline, you know, such more uh, a lot more of an emotional, um, an emotional beat for for the film for Batman, and it still could have been any Bruce when he came back. I don't, I don't know. It just I'm I'm I enjoy the movie, but there are a lot more points that over time I'm uh, souring on. Uh, just the more I think about it, but um, I do really want to watch it again very soon. And that's kind of why I want to kind of watch it and just us talk through it and everything. Um, just to kind of get through that. But okay, so that's The Flash for now. And now we're going to jump to uh, <laughs> comic books. and We're going to do Superboy number four. James, take us through Superboy. Because 
I know originally I was the one who was kind of like, eh, I'm not doing this, you know, but I saw it, I read it and I liked it. So, um, Oh, you like this issue? Yeah, I did. I feel like it, it, oh, it worked okay. for me. Good. Um, I like that. Uh, James, like you good. Been, you haven't been, <laughs> no, you haven't been, um, um, into this books a lot. Um, I'm it's been you, a build. I'm glad you like it. You POS. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you pick up where we left off and um, Superboy well I guess it's just like a smidge after we left off because Infinity is here yeah like <laughs> he wasn't like he wasn't face to face with them um, but we've got uh, Trav and Superboy versus um, Infinity and he's really kicking their butt and Trav ends up um we find out that Trav has, because he's like a technopath, he's rewired all of the clones' brains, or or at least has some way of connecting to the clones' brains to be able to control them. And which is probably like how they were weaponized to begin with, you know, from, yeah. from Dominator X. So it, it probably wasn't too hard to like tap into that. Um, but he takes control of all of the clones. So he has like an army of Dominator X's clones um, and he brings them all in and they swarm infinity and they actually rip him to be, uh, rip him to pieces. Um, and, and uh, Travis is using his, using his army of, of clones. Uh, they should have, it says uh, several of you should have tracking powers. Uh, use the, Biosignature from our late friend Infinity here to find the planet where Dominator X is hiding. Um, he says, uh, once they find the lab, we're going to burn it and the whole planet to ash. Um, and Superboy is not liking that, of course. You know, he's just, anybody, you can't just destroy an entire planet for one person's, um, for one person's uh, uh, horrible acts. Uh, so they <clears throat> uh, they get into a fight, and Trav has um, uh, red solar radiation to be able to weaken Superboy. Um, and he tells Superboy that over time he's been taking his DNA from all the fights that they have had um, and created a clone of Superboy uh, without a brain. Somebody he can control. Somebody with Superboy's powers that he can control. Um, the uh, Cosmeteers, Pyra, and... Um, uh, his name starts with an R. I forget his name. <clears throat> uh, they uh, they stand with Trav. They're, they're, um, they're, they're the only family they have. They're, they stand with Trav, and... Uh, the Green Lantern, Dal Tornin, um, Lantern of Sector 2828, comes to arrest them because Trav killed some uh, criminals who were supposed to be under arrest. So he, he locks them up, tries to um, arrest them, and they actually attack him. Rotor attacks him from behind, who's the, uh, who's the one who almost looks a little bit like... Um, Tomar Ray. Yeah, I know. But a little more bird like. Yeah, he's got a beak and stuff. <laughs> um, he attacks the Green Lantern from behind, and Pyra blows a hole through him and kills him. Um, so, yeah, I think the Cosmeteers are pretty, um, pretty much on the wrong path here, you know? They're going to be, they're going to be some serious bad guys. Uh, um, yes. <laughs> you know who they remind me of? Who's that? Um, um, the the elite. Oh, okay. Like uh, Superboy's elite. <laughs> yeah, like um, you know, like uh, the one dude. He reminds me of Manchester Black. And stuff like. Oh yeah, I guess yeah, I see that. that you know sense. what I'm saying? So it's it's kind of like 
the they cosmic tears remind me of the elite and this is like Superboy, like you said his his take on the, the elite ah uh, yeah his his test against a, a team like that who's who's kind of praised for saving people but killing people and doing bad things like the uh, ends justify the means kind of a thing um so they they take superboy down they knock him out and we cut to earth the fortress of solitude and um uh superman is looking for connor Kara and john nobody's seen him they haven't seen him in two weeks um Kellex tells him that he's that he's out um, in space somewhere that um, he's lost contact with him, um, and he says, uh, "I did not mean to deceive you, but I would ask you a question, Kal-El. Why did it take you two weeks for you to notice that Connell was missing? He wants to find his place in a strange world, something that, as an AI from Krypton, I empathize with. However, I've lost contact with him, and I fear he's in trouble." Um, so, yeah, he, and Superman says, you didn't do anything wrong, Kellex. You're right. I should have done better by Connor. We all should have. And I like that. Like, I like, um, I like that Superman's kind of wrong in this, so. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a very, um, I mean, as it was in this story, it's this version of Superboy was in Gem World. So when the world was rewritten he was he was written out of the world he didn't exactly. exist in the world so as as a super family member like he's even less thought of because he didn't even exist until they rescued him or until young justice rescued him from gem world so um i mean yeah it's it's he he feels even further disconnected from the super family as we have it these days uh, or as we have it presently. Um, so they they leave Superboy uh, alone on the planet, uh, alone to die on the planet. And um, Dominator X is got a secret lab on planet Chellum, and the Cosmeteers find him. Uh, and start with, uh, Trav says, start with Dominator X and then show the rest of the planet our might. Um, as Superboy uh, falls, loses consciousness, he's weak. The solar ra- radiation drained him. He's not recovering very fast. Um, he kind of passes out. And uh, somebody, the two, two beings, looks like children almost, see him and say that they saw him as with the Cosmeteers and it's Superboy. And next we've got Reign of the Cosmeteers. Yep. So that's what I'm saying. I actually, I think because of like the twist and it kind of, like I said, reminded me a little bit of like the elite. I, I liked it. It turned around for me and I can't exactly put my finger on it. Um, yeah, no, I think I think that's it. You know, I, I I kind of enjoyed the story as it was, you know, building up uh this story of like I said, the Superboy trying to find a purpose. He he came back into a world where he didn't exist, where he's not really needed because there's so many members of the super family. I was kind of on board early on. Um, but I can see definitely in this issue, especially with like this being like his version of the elite, that getting that being the hook that caught you. You know, mm-hmm. um, so I, I just feel like it, it kind of just uh, it was working for me, so good, cool. Um, so there's a um, another round robin finalist book coming out soon Constantine and the Demon Vacation from Hell. Yeah, I saw that. So I didn't really read it, I'm gonna wait till the um. Uh, I'm gonna wait till the book drops because since it's a roundup, it'll probably be dropping on the app same as this Superboy book. Um, so I look forward to checking that out when it comes. Um, I am right with you. So I enjoyed this, and I am continually impressed by just I don't know what what I feel like 
they're giving me with this book. Yeah, and the artwork is uh, the artwork is really good in this book. Um, you know, it is a little it is it's a little cartoony, uh, a little young, um, like the character drawings. Um, it's something I would expect to see in a Young Justice book or a Teen Titans book, where all the characters are like the same age. Yeah. You know, where where they seem a little younger. Um, but the quality of the art is pretty good throughout as well. So our next thing to bring up is Ruby Spears, episode six. Now, this episode, I'm pulling up my notes and my computer wants to run slow. For some reason, it decided my computer like an old person on Viagra. One minute, it's all go, 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 go. And then the next minute, it's like, oh, I can't move. I got to just take it slow. Save my energy for the big game. Right. <laughs> I don't like it anymore. <laughs> um, but this, you know, as all these Ruby Spears do, we're, we're going to kind of do it backwards. Uh, I found the second one of Young Clark at the Circus more entertaining. Oh, very much so. Um, uh, I I watched that one. I during the first one with the prankster, I found I caught myself on my phone. I, I had to put my phone back down to to watch to continue watching the episode. I'm trying to get my notes to load because that I, happened to me twice. <laughs> this one usually I take notes by hand, but this one I I type because I had I was typing something else as I was working. Um, had a very low IMDb score compared to some of the other episodes of this show. And where is it? The prankster with his nose reminded me of like the villain from or like the tracking villain from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> the prankster was just obsessed with baseball. And I think it just... Um, it just made me like lose touch and I just, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, he stole a stadium and then when he was in prison, he's like, Oh, come on. Let me hear a, let me hear an inning. Let me hear even a pitch. And they're like, no baseball for you. Yeah. Like he's not the baseballer. (laughs) Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. It was weird. Um, (coughs) it was not an episode. I liked. Um, no, it was called it was... the the triple play and the circus. The the prankster. Oh, no, my, the prankster forces Superman to play macabre baseball game against the kidnapped World Series team in triple play. Clark accidentally becomes part of the circus. That was funny because he goes to get soda, and then uh, first of all, my kids were like, "Why is Clark going off by himself?" He looks like he's young like me, Daddy. I'm like, look, it's a different time in Smallville, okay? Kids. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, different time and in Smallville. <laughs> and it was just funny because they're all like freaking out. And I'm like, yep, that's just how it was, kids. <clears throat> um, and while doing so, he goes into like one of those, oh, she's the uh, uh, spider lady. And he's like, oh, no, it's a monster. And he like uses his super breath. And reveals it's just a lady in a costume. Um, it's all this innocent stuff that happens. He tries to bring the drinks back to his parents and gets roped into the trapeze act by the elephant. Um, so yeah, just a very a very unlikely series of events um, <laughs> that would cause uh, a young child who's never trained or spent time to walk a tightrope and um you know he he flew down and caught some people who were falling and saved them (laughs) Mm -hmm. and then he just returns to his seat (laughs) and his parents are like clark what kept you he's like right uh after they knew he was the one who (laughs) swooped down and caught him yeah he's like um stuff (laughs) right so it was cute. I'm I'm not against it. Yeah, all those little backups are cute. And I feel like that's what defines this series because I feel like the mo- like especially this one, the main series, I I don't care about it, but All right, now 
the newest episode, episode three of My Adventures with Superman. And this one, I will have to say, was awesome because it started with an intro. What did you think of like the intro theme song, James? Um, yeah, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't too bad. Uh, I, I kind of liked it. It, it looked like it might've even given away that sometime later on in the season or the show that Jimmy and Lois find out who he is. I'm pretty sure they do. And I said this to Brian, cause we were watching it together. Was... I mean, the, the name is my adventures with Superman. Huh? I just said my the the store the the show is my adventures with Superman. Yeah, <laughs> is because I swear there's a uh, there's like a uh, in the one of the trailers or early on production there was like a scene of Lois like with Clark flying. So, mm, okay. but I like the intro. It has like this really cool like I wish it would go on longer music, but. Um, it just kind of cracks me up because it uh it has like every like I I made just for fun like I was listening to all the different scene, Superman themes and like music all have a very certain kind of flow to them. This one does not. Um, but the episode opens with like the appearance of Superman to the public during a balloon helium you know. Uh, yeah, a blimp, blimp, a blimp yeah. accident. And um and Superman saves him. We get a we get a shirt rip. It's an up close shirt rip. But we get a shirt rip and we see Lois trying to get to him. And then we get uh the, the two uh morons, you know, trying to bust him out of jail. Yeah. Um, so the, the names of those two, hi, uh, hello, he said, go, go to bed, Sarah, I think I heard him a little bit, <laughs> um, rough house and mist. Yeah. Um, I mean, though, both of those names sound familiar. I can't picture a character though. Um, for either one, but obviously they are there to rescue Siobhan. And we know that's Silver Banshee. So, let me ask you this, because I've seen this. Are they, do you think they're taking, they're taking basically, they call themselves intergang here, okay? Mm -hmm. They're taking tech weapons to make metahumans, or do you think they're metahumans using tech? Like, especially, like, with Siobhan, like, it looks like she's just using, you know, the mask. Yeah, I don't, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know that she has any metahuman powers. Um, she didn't, she didn't seem to, um, exhibit them in, in anything prior, and they, they did show, um, them robbing someplace early on, and, again, using their real names. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're not too bright like that, so. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're pretty dumb that way. Um. Um, we, we, have been, we have been I, using the new Clark Kent. Hey, yo, hey, hello. Like we have not been <laughs> using that as introduction. Nice. Um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't, see, I didn't see Siobhan like get her powers this episode. Um, I did see like the tech kind of like the freezing tech go off. Yeah. Um, you know, with the idea of inner gang and all this specialized tech, I'm wondering if it's uh, if it's Lex Luthor or like what's going on. Um, there, I think there's more to the story that we're not seeing yet. I agree. Uh, well, I'm sure there's more to the story that we're not seeing yet. Uh, who's supplying the tech? Um, they talk about a crazy woman. Uh, maybe is that Mercy? Is it Granny? Who knows? You know. Um, you know, one thing that I'm liking a lot is just the developing relationship with Superman and Lois when he brings her the coffee that he obviously like had to go across town to get. And this episode, he gets a new superpower. And if you think about it, this 
it, this series really starts to feel like it was made by Superman fans for Superman fans with little hints here and there because he's walking, holding a coffee, okay? And I'm playing it right now. I'm trying to get to it. He sees Lois and his eyes start sparkling. They start flashing red. Yeah. And I, like in Smallville. Like Smallville. <laughs> yep. Heat that's that's the exact same thing that Jamie said too. Like, oh, he sees Lois. <laughs> Um, so, a little more risque, but the same gist. <laughs> yeah, small is a little bit more intense. But we see, yeah. we get the introduction of Lombard, uh, Ronnie Troop, which is, you know, Ron Troop, and this one it's Ronnie, it's a female. And we get Cat Granite, which uh, we were watching that scene, and Brian goes, Jesse, James, <laughs> like from Pokemon. Like, oh, um, yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah, that does remind me of that. Yeah. Uh, well, I was watching it and I was like, yeah, like that is very that's that was like that's hardcore anime introduction right there. Just just like Team Rocket from Pokemon. That's the t- yeah, that's the team. I could not remember their name. Yeah. Um, Lois swipes the ID badges. They sneak in to Lois. Pretend she's like Kent Grant. Jimmy's like Ron Troop. And Clark's just like Steve. Yeah. <laughs> sports and it's just it's funny like it's enjoyable uh i've watched this episode like three times because the kids enjoy it and i love it they enjoy i only it. got to watch it once but i do plan on watching it again well we, i actually was just starting it again before we got on we uh we watch it as a family that's our thing so if we don't get a chance to watch it for breakfast on like fridays we will do it for dinner on fridays Ooh, um, nice. and uh, you know, basically there's a bank robbery scene and Brian said, wouldn't it be interesting if the female bank guard that's in there ends up being Maggie Sawyer? I thought that was cool. Um, yeah, that would be really cool. Kind of a, a young Maggie Sawyer starting out as like security like that. Clark, you know, uses his heat vision in this. So I'm happy. We got no Sailor Moon transformation scene. So that just seems like it was just for the first power up. In getting his suit. Yeah, yeah, we didn't, we don't need that every time. Um, I mean, the only, the only reason that it would work is if it was a Kryptonian suit like the New 52, where it spawned the way it did, you know? Yeah. Um, the way Supergirl's suit did, what was that, season four on? Four on, yeah. Where it kind of came out nanotech wise. Yep. Yeah, other than that, you know, I I don't think that that should be the case. Then, you know, the the episode, you know, Clark, after telling Lois and Jimmy to leave, um, and he sees they stay to help people, he decides to give Lois an interview. And basically, she asks him questions like, I don't know. I'm still figuring it out. I like how he's still, he's still like unsure of how much he, he's still unsure of how much he should be doing, you know, breaking the rules with Lois and, and pushing the boundaries of what they should and shouldn't be doing. Um, especially when it comes to their job and work, um, uh, his, his hiding his Superman identity from them is, is really funny. Um, especially when he's like, I have to find them, those guys and stop them and, I mean, right up, right about them. <laughs> yeah. That's the scoop we should be going after. They're like, what? Um, I do, I do like how he did. I, I must say that we did call it how this episode was going to be. He did give an interview because of um, them kind of getting scooped, mm-hmm. um, or at least the byline being given to reporters on staff, not just um, interns. And. Uh, I did like how he decided to give the interview after Kat and Steve and Ronnie all showed up trying to get the interview. Yeah. He's he no dummy. He no dummy. Um, but then at the end, he like he barely answered anything for Lois. Then it's one of those great scenes where he like she's looking as Superman flies off. Then Clark comes running up behind her. And... She's like, he's like, how was it? Did you like him? She's like, he's lying. And that's how the episode ends. 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> He's like, what? That was, yeah, that was an interesting end. Um, I was, <laughs> I'm wondering what she think like, like what she bases that on. Um, because he, I mean, he was really honest at that point. Like, he's like, I'm piecing it together. I don't know where I'm from or what I can do. And um, I just, I'm just here to help. And like the most honest answer he can give. And she's like, he's a liar. <laughs> it's like, <dumb. laughs> uh, right. That almost seems like it's like, that almost seems like they're trying to push that Lois is pushing her journalistic intuition, like to an extreme point where she's wrong. But it also plays on the fact he is kind of lying because he does know some stuff and you do have Clark not telling them that he's Superman. So it'll be interesting where this is going forward. I'm enjoying it and I look forward to the next episode. I am very much enjoying the show. I, I love it. Um, I, I like anime and having a Superman anime show that's very, um, very good, uh, very good, very, very new. It's really interesting. He's like, he's Superman, but he's learning his powers. He doesn't know what he can do. Um, his powers are still developing. Uh, we're introducing these characters. Like, we've got, like, the accident that happens that creates Livewire. Uh, Slade shows up again in this episode. Um, and, and like, what, what is Task Force X going to, uh, how is Tex Task Force X going to, um, steer the show, mm -hmm. steer, steer what the, what the plot of the show is going to be? Like, is it going to be a Suicide Squad versus a Superman later on? Like, who knows? Maybe. Maybe. Well, let's stick around and we'll find out. We're going to press pause and hear a few words from our other podcasts on Press Play Podcast Network. Part of the Press Play Podcast Network. What's up, everybody? Chase Smith here from the Chase Smith Podcast and Cavs on the Break NBA Podcast. And I'm JD, host of the Hyman Podcast, part of the Press Play Podcast Network. And we are super excited to bring you a brand new show starting next Tuesday, the Fanfare Podcast. The Fanfare Podcast is all about your favorite movies and our favorite movies and the best moments in cinema. To help guide our discussion, each episode will feature one classic. And we will grade this movie using a report card-like scale A through F. We're going to be grading categories like acting, directing, cinematography, the score, and even the movie poster itself. And we're not featuring a movie report card. We'll be sharing our movie rankings, franchise deep dives, actor and director interviews, and everything in between. Movies have been a major part of our lives, and we cannot wait to share our thoughts with you. Our premiere episode will drop Tuesday, June 27th, and JD and I will be reviewing Raiders of the Lost Ark in preparation of the release of Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny on June 30th, the fifth installment of the franchise. Join us on the Fanfare Podcast, available on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to your podcast. Hello, Brooks here with the Books with Brooks monthly book club podcast. Here's how Books with Brooks works. We read one book a month, and then we talk about it. Classics like Stephen King's The Shining, debut novels like We Are the Brennans by Tracy Lang, and tons of other compelling, life-changing stories, one book and one month at a time. So come read along with us, and then listen in. Before we start this episode of Krypton Report, I want to take a moment and just give a shout out here to our Patreon. I know what you're thinking. Gosh, everyone's asking for money, and I get it. But our Patreon is only a dollar. One dollar a month that helps us keep the podcast going, and what we do is we try to find interesting shows and topics and whatever we want to talk about. We've done, as of this little thing, our last recordings were on the Scream series. Brian and Tyler, that's me, do our own show where we record in the car, and it's kind of funny, and we talk about pop culture or whatever is going on. We also have the Supernatural podcast we've been reworking. It's taken on some time just because of life. But we do movie commentaries as well. It's something that James and I have done, what we used to do on the main show that we've started doing here. 
So for $1 a month on our Patreon, you can get those shows. There's at least four a month. Also, there's my movie pitch show that I do. But also, what we want is if you're a Patreon, you can come on. You can come on the main show if you want. Or if there's something you want to come on and talk about, we can do it as a Patreon special. So all I want is for $1 a month, think about chipping in, joining our Patreon, and you have a voice to be a part of things. Follow the link in the link tree or in the show notes below, patreon.com slash Krypton Report. This is Dan Jurgens, and if you want to have a good time, Keep listening to the Krypton Report. In Kryptonian day, in Metropolis night, no Lex Luthor shall evade my sight. Let those who worship Kryptonite's light beware my power, Superman's might. Damn, my wife is awesome. <laughs> Welcome back. How was that quick break here? We are back. We have some more things to talk about. And jumping back into everything, um, San Diego Comic-Con has been going on. And it's just started. And the one thing is, what we've got today is McFarlane news. Don't we, James? <laughs> McFarlane. <laughs> so, McFarlane has released, it is releasing a special of Batman Okay, and I think this is cool. It's part of the Warner Brothers 100 year, but I have three issues with it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it is a set of six Batman figures. First of all, technically, they should have just made it seven. They should, it is the Michael Keaton 89 figure, not the one from The Flash, but the 89 figure. Okay, so that's kind of a new figure, all right? It is the Justice League Batfleck, which I wish they just did the BVS Batfleck, okay? We have the Batman, which same figure I already have. We have the Christian Bale, the Dark Knight. Should have done for this collection, the Batman Begins, okay? If we're going to make a variant on Keaton here, we should have given us a different Ben Affleck and the other... Um, Christian Bale okay but we have the Val Kilmer in the sonar suit from Batman Forever and then the greatest Batman of all time George Clooney <laughs> and uh, so that looks I mean it looks awesome like I've been we've been wanting this you know yeah it's it's like three it's like three new figures obviously with Kilmer Clooney and the 89 Keaton. Yeah, but I'm uh, like to make it really awesome. Like I know Pattinson, there's no other like suit, <laughs> but Affleck, they give us the BVS suit. You know, should have been in this collection and the dark and the Batman Begins shoot, just so you feel like you're buying a collection. Because found out later, they sent out a picture. They put out a picture of they are doing a Batman and Robin line that features this same Clooney, um, Batgirl. And Robin and Poison Ivy. And the build a figure is Mr. Freeze. Yeah. So that's awesome. <laughs> so I'm that's like, awesome. So that uh, right there makes it okay. There's there's one strike, boom, against this collection. Another strike. Yeah. So now Well, if if you have if you have all the figures, like for me, like I could buy all those I could buy that collection and have all those figures. Right. You know, but like like people who bought all of the Justice League figures, um, they got that Batman in their collection. People who bought the Batman, they've got that one. People who bought the Dark Knight, they bought they got that one. Exactly, that's um, what I'm saying. I have, I and the thing, my thing is, they're also going to do a line, not a build a figure line though, of Batman and Robin, or I mean Batman Forever, which will be probably that same Kilmer. A Robin, Two Face, and Riddler. So now, after that announcement, this this collection has nothing for me other than that eighty nine figure, hmm. and that eighty nine figure sold semi separate <laughs> because it comes with the um, what do you call it? Um, the Batmobile. They just released. You can buy that figure with the Batmobile now. Ah. Uh. Yeah, that uh, that's cool. Um, 
Well, I mean, it's, I would love to get that. Um, but I do know that one of my next figures that I'm going to be getting is going to be that, um, gold label, um, Dark Knight Rises Bane with the, with the coat, the coat that I actually have. Oh yeah. Yeah. Me and Solomon <laughs> were talking about that too, about that how- way I don't have to, that way I don't, cause I, cause I couldn't buy the whole line because that's the only one I want, but now that I can buy it gold, I was like, yeah. Um, yeah, gold always throws me because I forget about them and where they are. Ah, um, uh, yeah, that's how I got my dark side, though. <laughs> yeah, your dark side is dope. <laughs> you got dark side, and I got Uxus. All right. the power of a shirt, <laughs> all the power of that armor, uh, that chest piece. So, that's all I have for news that's kind of come out here. Um, so we're going to jump into comics and what we have is night terrors, Superman. Number one, James, what did you think of night terrors? Um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm okay with it at this point. Um, I mean, the story itself is, is pretty cool. Cause you know, uh, I read the first issue uh, I read the free comic introduction and then I read the first issue on the app. Um, and then this issue kind of picks up where that first issue leaves off. Uh, I thought it was interesting. The, the artwork, um, and cause, because it is nightmares, it's like these different scenarios yeah, how the artwork um, changes. Like, you see just a uh, old like '40s looking Jimmy and Lois, and then Jimmy's Bizarro. Then he's like the turtle Jimmy. Mm-hmm. And the and, and Lois has a suit, like a superhero suit on. Then she's got like that witch hat on, and then uh, she's got the wedding dress on. Yeah, all classic uh, Superman comics. Um, it's really interesting though, because Superman is, uh, he's like, this is just a dream. Like he's, he's sure of it from like the beginning. Um, but like what's going on? Um, the artwork's pretty cool though. Like the tsunami coming over Metropolis. Mm-hmm. That one's pretty wild with the skyline. Well, then they're all, like, drowned. What do you think of this character who's going after Insomniac? Yeah, Insomnia. Um, Why couldn't he be, like, Insomniac? Or, like, I just feel like... I know it's more difficult to name characters anymore, but it just feels so lame. Insomnia. Yeah. Like, how about not, like, the Insominator? I don't know. That's lame, but whatever. (laughs) I would take it over, like, just being generic, like, Insomnia. Like... What about like sleep paralysis? Like, you know, like dream paralysis or nightmare paralysis. I don't know. Yeah. Something where it feels like you're giving them a title. Like the the character like, design though, with with the name Insomnia and the way it looks like he's got like no eyelids. Like his eyes are just like peeled open mm-hmm. all the time. It's it's a creepy look. Um, he puts he he gives Clark like all these scenarios like the Earth burning up, the Earth freezing, uh, nuclear bombs, like Brainiac invasion. Um, and then Clark Superman standing on a pile of bones, on a pile of skulls. What did you think of the? Uh, of the um, page where where the where this Superman insomnia Grim Reaper slices the, the whole of, planet in half. The the man of stream screams. The man of screams. Yeah. <laughs> um, I thought it was cool because he he says like your ship wasn't uh. 
you were like a bullet to earth that was fired. Yeah, like like his fear, like he was sent there to destroy the earth or to conquer it. Mm -hmm. So, I thought that was cool. I thought it was just an interesting, uh, like just what he was dealing with. And then Superman basically is laying on a beach somewhere as he fell out of the sky. Um, You know, saying, it's just a dream. It's just a dream. It's just a dream. And uh, we see that this, whatever this is, is not affecting the Atlanteans. So what do you think about that, James? Um, yeah, I was curious as to why it's not affecting Atlantis, why, why it's not affecting them. Um. Surely they sleep and stuff, but there's got to be some, I'm, I'm sure there's a, a reason here. I, I thought it was kind of funny, him washed up on shore with other people on this beach. wonder if these people passed out on the beach. Um, I was kind of hoping for like a, a, a Man of Steel shot of Superman like floating underwater. Mm. And then maybe like we get Aquaman... Uh, pulling him to shore. That would be cool. Like, um, how? I've been Did you thinking... think this was really Supergirl who broke into his dream? No, because it didn't make sense. Like, I punched and punched. I broke in. That did it make sense to me? I mean, yeah. They haven't laid out. Is the this him? I was, yeah, I was gonna say, is this him? But then yeah. she's chased by all these dead versions of her. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I'm like, maybe I'm wrong. You know? that, yeah, that's what I, that's what I wasn't sure of because I was trying to identify a number of them because you know obviously we got the the Red Lantern, we've got the uh, uh, the '80s headband version, got the uh, 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 the Supergirl Return version, like when she comes from in in that Apocalypse uh, story, Return. yeah, and then the white T shirt from like the the animated series. I know she wore it at some point in the comics, but I think it originated from the animated it series. It did originate in the animated series. Um, so, yeah. That's Nightmare. Have you been reading all of this line? I'm reading the ones that drop on the app. I'm reading the ones that drop on the app as well. So, right now, I think there's only been the first one. Right? I think so. So, because it was just last week where all of those other ones came out. Yeah. Um, there was like Green Lantern, Shazam, Joker, Joker. I want to read Shazam. Punchline. Because I'm interested in Mark Wade writing it. So I'm going to read that. Uh, yeah, because nothing dropped on the app this week for, um, for Night Terrors. No, nope. I mean, you know, I, I did say when it was coming out that it's going to be right up my alley too. you know, it's, it's a, it's horror stories. It's just, it's just kind of funny. Cause like, so I went to half price books with Solomon and Jania and what's, we were looking around and I found, um, the McFarlane, uh, what is it called? I found the McFarlane Superman Blackest Night open, but it wasn't in a bag. It wasn't priced. So I asked the lady how much it is. Okay. She starts looking around and she's like, oh, I'll give it to you for seven bucks. Right as I find the bag. She's like, oh, is that the bag? I was like, yeah, it's priced fourteen ninety nine. I'm just like, okay. I'm just like, you know, all right. Um, no, you know, no, sorry, it's not. <laughs> I'm like, it's still, you know, $10 cheaper than if I bought it new. And I'm not going to build a, I don't want to build the whole flipping, uh, what do you call it? I don't want to build the whole atrocities. Uh-huh. So, and I'm like, no, nah. I was like, I told her, I said, I'll pass. Um, you know, 14 is a little much, but if it was seven, I would get, she's like, oh no, I'll sell it to you for seven. 
I was like, sold. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> so I, I bought it. it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we got that and everything. And then Solomon, um, he, we dug out all my Blackest Night comics today. So he is looking through slash kind of skim reading all of Blackest Night. So you're talking about, you know, just horror comics. We're getting back into that. Which reminds me, I did forget something for the news. So my bad, everybody. My bad, okay. Uh, on Max, there is now the three-part super-powered History of DC Comics documentary. Solomon and I read the first part. Or not read, but watched the first part. And I educated Solomon on who Bill Finger is. Afterwards, he is now really wants to punch Bob Kane in the face. <laughs> he's been dead for a while. Um, so that was, you know, cool. And it's a really good documentary so far. Like, it's just weird how much they're trying to cram into this. You know, they do a good job of touching on things without going too far in de- in depth because we all know how much the just just the superman angle is just the stuff with Siegel and Schuster but that documentary is up and all three parts the whole thing yeah they just dropped oh okay thing. yeah i got to check that out um so i will continue to watch that as I can. So, any other thoughts on that? Uh, no. Until James watches it, we can talk about it. Yes. Yes. I didn't realize that. I knew it was coming, and I knew it was going to be here very soon. I didn't. Um, and I just saw the ad on it when I was when I checked out uh, my adventures with Superman. It's like, oh, that's probably out now. I got to check it out. And it's it's good and. I'm not going to get into the people who are arguing about Snyder. They, they're they not talking about Zack Snyder's Justice League. Well, one, we're not there. And two, the clips they have used, some of them could be, yeah, but most of them are from Justice League. Um, but people just need to calm down, okay? <laughs> so that's all I'm saying for right now until I finish the whole documentary. Um, <coughs> But that's a nice segue into episode four of My Adventures with Superman. James, how are you digging this cartoon, man? Um, so I'm really, I'm actually, I'm digging the cartoon. I'm loving the cartoon, um, the anime, the characters. Like in this episode in particular, we've got Lois just really bombarding people at this, like, at this party type event, someplace where, yeah, that's not what you do. They're there for Cat Grant. They're there for like the gossip column, kind of like to do stuff like that to kind of, um, that's what they're looking for. And just like Lois is like, she can't read the room or she has no way of like not being who she is. Like, you know, she, she, that's Lois. I mean, she goes after the story really hard, but you know, I think, I think over the years, Lois learned some tact and this version has none. <laughs> Not yet, anyways. Yeah, this, uh, she is, and we learned that she's, you know, she's been there for a year, and, um, she hasn't, you know, she's still an intern, so she's fighting with that, because she gets a phone call from her dad. Um, this episode's called Let's Go to Ivo Tower, you say. So, first of all, we have tech billionaire Dr. Ivo who leads a mesotech and he ends up creating what Solomon predicted somehow. Cause my child's a genius. Um, the parasite suit. And then this, the parasite suit is like tech based. It's like bio organic. And when you fight, it absorbs like kinetic energy and reflects the energy back at whoever you're fighting. Instead of, and I was like, wow, this is really kind of cool. And, you know, I was like thinking, oh, yeah, Amazo, but no. Yeah, that that's the only thing, like, 
so I'm not having I'm not I'm not having real any real issue with like these different versions of tech creating these these villains, especially when they when they go when when the tech haywires and and you know like affects them changes changes them like it did to Livewire, like it did to um, Ivo. Parasite Ivo at the end. Yeah. Um, the only issue I had with this being that is is it's Professor Ivo, you know, um, and he creates a Mazo. I mean, Professor Ivo isn't Parasite, so, but I'm not like I'm not I'm not saying that it it hurt the episode in any way. Um, it's just a curious choice. Yeah, for real, it is. It's it's an interesting choice and. At the end, like the suit gets damaged and Clark Superman's ripping it off, you know, and it it withers him and he looks like he's going to be like regular parasite, like it's going to mold with him. Um, we didn't get like what? Okay, so we have a scene where Clark rips his suit jacket, and Lois tells him to take it off so she can fix it, and obviously he doesn't. We see him like just in a t-shirt, so. Is, do you do you think his suit is like the new fifty two style? Um where it's gonna grow from his symbol or something? Well, it did kind of do it did kind of um appear on him. That was only the first time, you know, but then the first time he put it on. Last episode he we got a good shirt rip. This episode we got a good shirt rip. Because yes. it was yeah, it was after um um it was after he pushed the guy through the window and was, and was holding him out and Clark took off and Jimmy's like, where's Clark? And she's like, he's right here and he's gone. He runs out the back door and does a shirt rip. Okay. I, I missed it because I was eating my noodles. Yeah. So he did do a shirt rip, but we did see him just before that in a t-shirt. So it has to be, it has to be something like, like that like the new 52 um because i mean i know we've always we've always even we've even made comments like like these suits won't work with capes underneath them um <laughs> or the boots like that's my other thing is like the boots yeah speaking of you know i noticed in this episode he has tall boots he has boots that go right up to the bottom of his kneecap yeah right up to the bottom of his knee I was like, you know what? That looks good on this Superman. On this this suit, you know, the two tone blues, the tall boots. I like the two tone blue. Yeah, I'm, I I may not have chosen like where the two tones are in this suit, but I do like it. Mm-hmm. Kid, the kids love this suit, like show because like this morning we woke up and they're like, "New Superman, Dad, we gonna watch Superman." I'm like, dang, kids, yes. <laughs> yeah. um, and then as soon as it's over, they're both like, I want to watch more. I'm like, yes. Um, but it was funny because Solomon's, I'm so like Jimmy in this. <laughs> 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 it's funny. And Sayla's like, I think I'm like Lois. I like Lois in this. And I'm like, yeah, I can see it. But Lois, they definitely are giving Lois a little bit more of an Asian flair with like the way her outfits and stuff are. Like when she dressed up, it was fine. Um, but it was interesting just thinking back, like the Clark and Lois have this like, are they on a date? Are they not on a date kind of thing? It was cute. She gives him a kiss on the cheek. Um, and then they walk off together. Clark takes his jacket off and wraps it around Lois and Jimmy. Jimmy's like, yeah, it's going to be a great night of three best friends. And then he sees the two of them walking together. It's a little sad, but at the same time, Jimmy has been kind of shipping them, you know, and pushing them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I can see him feeling a little depressed. Like, he feels like he's being, like, squeezed out of the group a little bit. But, um, you know, he, he was he's been pushing for this. Yeah, so don't be too surprised, bro. All right. Let's talk about that end, James. Clark Kent is Superman? Lois put it together. Yeah. Um, 
Well, what do you think about that? It it makes perfect sense. Like, you know, they were looking at alien like type. Jimmy had a bunch of like rumored stuff and you saw how she was like looking at it and there was little pieces of things and she's starting to make a board and putting them together. And then earlier in the episode, Clark ripped something off a book. There was like the 15th anniversary of the flying boy of Smallville spotted. Mm-hmm. And Lois puts it there. And then all of a sudden you just see like Clark and how he caught her and Clark smiling, Superman smiling this, this. And she goes, Clark Kent is Superman. And boom, there it was. Yeah. Um, so they always, they always end on a, like a Lois cliffhanger the past two episodes. Yeah. I mean, it's not this, they always leave on some sort of cliffhanger. Every episode is kind of like a little cliffhanger. Um, for the next one, which I like. And the last two have been Lois. Um, no, I I really like it. Um, I don't think that that it works as a long time story prop anymore. You know? Um, Lois not knowing who Superman is. Yes, for a little while. Um, I wasn't sure if they were going to find it out this season. Or if if they were at all, or if they were going to stretch it out, but um, uh, I'm really excited for the idea because I liked he was going to tell her, and then yeah. she was like, "It's all Superman's fault," and he was like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> and he stopped. Um, he, he totally. He was like, "Uh," she's like, "What are you going to say, Clark?" Uh, no, 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 nothing. Yeah. Uh, but the uh, her finding out, I. I like that for I like that for them, um, especially since they are kind of kicking off the relationship thing. Um, and she did like Clark first. I do think that is I do think that's important. I think that's a good the the best route to go, um, and I think that's more modern <laughs> mm-hmm. than than that ever used to be. But um, I really liked how she's like how she tore down the board and said, and started from now and worked her way backwards, you know, found articles that kind of matched up and traced it back farther. And, um, it was really cool how she just stumbled upon that article. He ripped up and crumpled in his pocket. Um, I like how he didn't even think about having that there when he gave her, um, when he gave her his coat. I know. It's like sad and cute at the same time. Yeah. Reminds me of an episode of Psych. When Sean wraps his coat around Juliet and there's a piece of evidence in it that proves that Sean is not always telling the truth. Um, yeah. I really like this show. And I cannot wait to see more. And I guess, here's a piece of news as of this recording. I guess they dropped a new trailer for Harley Quinn Season 4. But I have not watched it yet. Oh, no. I haven't watched it either. So, bad on us. We're trying. But we're not perfect. We're like the Red Green Show. We're trying. Hey, you know what? Give give people a chance to see it too. Like yeah. if we haven't seen it, then others have it. Yeah, I don't give a few to... more listeners a chance to see it, and then we'll talk about it, and they'll understand. Yeah, <laughs> I just I just don't want to be that guy who's like, yeah, this this debuted three seconds ago. Here's my review, my complete breakdown, and all my reaction and spoilers. And you're just like, dude, you suck, man. <laughs> like, right. Um. Uh, and then, so that's my adventure super win. And the last little bit thing we have here is episode seven of the Ruby Spears series. Did you get to watch it, James? Um, you know, I should have told you ahead of time. No. Duh. Okay. That was my bad. That's okay. N- not telling you. <laughs> this one, I'm going to read it to you real quick here. And we'll talk. Well, I'll tell you about it and you can go watch it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, it's called The Hunter and Little Runaway. While Clark's parents are called when uh, Superman's called out 
that people escape from the Phantom Zone or trying to escape from the Phantom Zone. General Zod and his companions successfully create a creature they call the Hunter, which comes to Metropolis to destroy Superman. Able to convert itself into any substance it touches, the Hunter converts itself into steel, breaks into the Daily Planet, captures Lois in order to attract Superman. After battling Superman, the creature retreats and introduced and introduced to Kryptonite by General Zod. The Hunter seeks out Lex Luth- Luthor, which touches a piece of his diamond. Um, this episode's probably the only one I had seen before this review because this episode is the only time you see a horrible looking General Zod who looks more like M. Bison. Um, you see him with two other Kryptonian companions in the Phantom Zone, and it's Feora and Ursa. It is the only time we see Feora and Ursa together. Um, it's very unique, and I would well, like to dang, say that, that that really makes me that makes me disappointed. I didn't watch it ahead of time. And the hunter is kind of a a proto doomsday in a way, um, just this big machine, and basically Superman tricks it to think that he's kryptonite. He gets kryptonite poisoning, and um. Uh, Lois revives him. Ta-da. And the it's an interesting, you know, the thing goes after Lex Luthor. But, you know, at the end, they don't escape the Phantom Zone. It's all good. And then the second part is Clark wants to go to the movies, the young Clark on the farm. And... He's got to do his chores. So he starts using his superpowers. Of course, Pa doesn't approve of it. So then he decides he's going to run away. And he runs away. But then a dog steals his bag of his sandwich. And some homeless dude eats his sandwich. So then Clark's walking away. Sees some kids having a picnic. And their ma made them some pie. And he's like, oh, ma makes good pies. Then he goes home. And basically, he'd only be gone for like two hours. And no one had really noticed. And then he just eats dinner and says he'll finish his chores. <laughs> so I was like, okay, cool. We watched that in the car while we waited for Jania to finish uh, getting a couple of things in the store because the kids didn't want to go in the store. So we just hung out in the car and watched Superman. There you go. That's how it's done. So that is the Ruby Spears. We're making our way through it. Um, trying to finish it up here. Um, but yeah, um, that is, I, I didn't, uh, I didn't watch the Ruby Spears, but I did read the world's finest 16. Oh yeah. I I forgot to put that in our notes. Please go ahead with that one. I did too. I just forgot to mark it in our notes. Go for it. James, lead us there. All right. Uh, well, number 16, we, we open up with the Batmobile, which has been taken over, um, going head first into a wall. Robin's inside and he is rescued by the flash. Um, find out that all AI is being taken control of and, and attacking. And, um, we find out that Superman and Batman are both captured or, well, we don't find out. Robin finds out that both, uh, Superman and Batman are captured by new Mezo. Um, it's such a like generic, but yet, awesome working name yeah and then we got ultra morpho it just works man it does i I, Um, I was mark wade i'd be like guys can i take a crack at this insomnia name like (laughs) just give me a second okay uh who you know what they probably brainstormed that's the best they could come up with um insomnia slack i don't know look i'm just i'm spitballing here give me a minute i'll work on it I mean, Insomniac is good. That's kind of, that's a good name. I mean, Insomnia is a good name too, I think. Um, I just don't like when it's just the generic word. Yeah, I understand. I I get where you're coming from. I do. But then we don't need super long names like Ghostmaker. Thanks, James Tynan. (laughs) But continue. Uh, Yeah, so we're... um, so now they're talking, Batman and Superman are talking with um, Will Magnus and uh, Dr. Ivo. They're discussing um, like where this had come from. So Magnus used his um, his uh, responsometer technology 
which is what gives his metal men like personalities and being able to kind of learn and um and and he so he designs one for new mezzo um or what well, professor ivo like he captures him and and forces him to make one for new mezzo um and then they afterwards they they find out that the responsometer inside a mezzo is actually um allowing a mezzo to duplicate the minds of the smartest people so like him having ivo and magnus toy man dr cyber um, bertram larvin uh it's it's allowing a mezzo to uh, copy all of their knowledge so that way new mezzo is like super intelligent as well um, because they talk about how the original Amazo had limitations. Um, New Mazo's plan requires materials, uh, resources, billions of dollars, and that's why he replaced uh, people like Simon Stagg and Oliver Queen with duplicates so they could funnel resources to him. Isn't Ted Cord there too? Uh, Ted Cord is there, yes. Um, they even ask if they found out. Um, they even ask later on if they found out if Oliver Queen and Ted Cord are Green Arrow and Blue Beetle. Um, we find out that some of these people who are being controlled by New Mezo um, is actually they're they are actually heading to reclamation plants and jumping into like vats of acid or something and being dissolved for their base elements, their base chemical elements so that new Mezo can use them. Crazy. Yeah. Which is, which is pretty dark there. Um, you think, <laughs> yeah. And we got uh, Hawkman in the sky fighting Kellex and, um, Superman robots, uh, from the fortress. Uh, we got teams of people. We've got, um, uh, plastic man rescuing all of these people from, uh, one of the plants. Um, he actually, he's like a giant, giant shovels and he's sending people out and then, uh, he, he clears the, the factory. So, uh, Metamorpho and others can destroy it. And then the metal men lead the way, lead the charge against, um, Superman's robots just to buy just to be able to buy them time. Um, Metamorpho says, no, you don't stand a chance, uh, Metamorpho comes to, comes head uh, comes into contact with GI Robot, <laughs> who is being controlled. Um, and Metamorpho turns into acid and you know goes to destroy him. As the metal men are being kind of destroyed um, by all the super robots. Yeah, it's pretty sad. Um, they Batman has come with come up with a plan to stop Ultramorpho. Um, that Metamorpho and Superman cracked him and they are using um, everybody's engineering techniques and Oliver's uh, bow and arrow to shoot something in that crack in Ultramorpho's chest that will shatter him. Um, because he's He's made of he he's tra transformed to kryptonite and he remains kryptonite inside the room to keep Superman weak. Um, they use uh, lead paneling to try and block the radiation. Um, as soon as Superman has a little bit of power, um, he removes everybody's uh, everybody's collar, keeping them uh, keeping them obedient and and in line. Uh, they say Ultramorpho's not dead, he's reassembling, and not to worry, and we get Green Lantern, Firestorm, Supergirl, Wonder Woman, Metamorpho, Robin, and The Flash all show up. Um, Firestorm uses his his abilities to change Ultramorpho's elements, kind of uh, neutralizes him. Uh, in a brief uh, in a brief time later. Uh, they explain everything. Um, 
They are worried about uh, New Mezo showing up with all these people with powers. Um, they send up all of these small satellites. Um, while Wonder Woman and Robin go to find Tio Morrow. Um, and he basically says that it's hopeless to stop New Mezo. Um, that every scenario he's run, uh, they all lose. Humanity is brought to the brink of extinction. Um, says, uh, uh, they, they load everybody up to take everybody, um, you know, back to safety, back to the city. And Batman, Supergirl, why aren't you with the others? I had a different idea. I'll do what I need to do. Don't worry. But first, and she's kind of transforming. I thought this was like Clayface or something. Mm -hmm. But it's New Mezo. I choose to eliminate you. So he has like shape-shifting abilities like Clayface. And to be yeah. concluded, got Batman alone with New Mezo. And no prep times. <laughs> yeah. So it's actually funny because we were talking about this episode of um, My Adventures with Superman, and I thought we were going to segue into this. <laughs> My bad. No, it's fine. <laughs> I was just like, yeah, a little segue there into um, James uh, right. Tio Morrow and Ivo. <laughs> James had it all laid out, and I done screwed it up. Hey. Uh, well, you know what? You jumped into Ruby Spears, and I didn't even get a chance to watch it. So, Yeah, it happens. Sometimes hey. the segues can't line up perfectly, right? We try. We try. We try hard. <laughs> it's 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 an art. It is. But that's it for us this week. Hope you enjoyed. Check us out and remember. Look up in the sky. We just want to say if you've enjoyed this podcast, please check out other podcasts on the Press Play Podcast Network. One dollar a month, you'll get extra special content that you don't get on the main show, like movie commentaries and whatever else comes out of our mouths. So check it out, patreon.com slash krypton. If you are like Tyler and James and can't get enough super talk, check out these other podcasts. Digging for Kryptonite, Supergirl Radio, The Last Sons of Krypton, The Superboy Legacy Podcast, All-Star Superfans, Superman the Animated Podcast, The Aspiring Kryptonians, Always Hold On to Smallville, The Geek of Steel, and Truth, Justice, and Hope. Remember to check out Krypton Report on all social media platforms. Go to linktree.com slash Krypton Report. you find find all of our information.